Hey, you guys, it is Tam Telling Tales, and I have another exciting cinema chat for you all. Y'all want to talk to Dewan Ford? I know you do. Be right back. I got it. Tam Telling Tales. I got it. Tam telling tales. I got it. Tam telling tales. I got it. Talk twister. Say it real fast one time. Hey everybody, it is Tam telling tales, and you know this face, okay? If you have ever sat down for any moment in time and watched a film streaming on Tubi or on Amazon Prime, on Vimeo, you have seen this man's face, okay? Mr. Duan Ford, how are you? I'm doing good. I'm doing great. How you feeling? I'm wonderful. That's good. It's always <laughs> good. You know, second time around. Second you know, time around. Because second time. Can we tell this story of the first time? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so the first time Duan came, right, it was my first interview here in my studio. First one. First one, right? Like we was, we call ourselves sending it out. We had home cooked meal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Listen, good timing, good okay, timing. we was having us a ball, having some good old conversation. I had all my cute little questions and everything. <laughs> man, listen, I went back to play that video footage. Oh man, chalked it. Oh, oh man, audio was man. terrible. Well, and it was it was uh, Javon's audio. Yeah, right? yeah mine. No, nope, mine was messed up oh, too. Yours, oh, okay. I, yours I was, was the only was one. one. Yours was the only one that worked. Yeah, uh, it, it's your fault. It was. No, no, I'm it was our fault. It, it was the technology's fault. <laughs> oh, all oh, right. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's that's what it was. That's it, what yeah, it was. Got to blame on the technology. Absolutely, because it's always the technology. <laughs> so, no, really, it's man, Javon. It's Javon fault. Let's let's blame him. We can blame him because he's not here. Yeah, yeah. man, because uh, he, he walking around. Wearing different suits and stuff and all, all that. We we didn't get a chance to talk about that. You know what I'm saying? We no, did. we did. Did we? We didn't get a chance yeah. for them to hear it. Yeah, yeah. So, but yeah, yeah, it was his man. fault. Yeah, it's, it's always his fault. Yeah, I believe that. No, man, shout out to bro, though, man. That's, that's my guy, <laughs> man. That, you know, that's my dog. <laughs> that's so my dog. we always start the show off with a game of preferences, mm -hmm. and so and nothing's changed. We're gonna do the same thing with you, sir. Let's get it. Let's get it. All right. Let's see. Let's see. <clears throat> West side, east side. Oh, west side all day. I don't, I don't even go to the east side at all. No, yes. no, I'm, I'm joking. It's like growing up, it was like that. Like it was like two different. It yes. You know, like but then now it's like you know, the older I got, you know, I actually uh, I used to work, you know, over there and work in different neighborhoods and stuff like that. So I, I got more comfortable with the east side, but I'm on west side all day. Yeah. Eight miles, seven miles, six miles. I I didn't stay down there everywhere on, on the west side. Um, you know, that's, that's all day. Yeah, I'm West Side all girl. So I'm <laughs> uh, iPhone, Android. Uh, iPhone. Yeah, <laughs> you know, it was crazy because my mom, she, she was the first one to get an iPhone. At the time, I had a Blackberry. I'm like, man, ain't nobody about to get no dang <laughs> on Apple phone. I love like, my what, what is that? And it's like, now this phone is like the fucking standard. It's the you know, standard. It's it like, should be though, but that's another story for a different hey, day. But. No, but for real, because like when somebody texts me and they don't show up blue, I'm like, man, I don't even want to communicate with you no that's more. That's rude. Man. For real, for real. That's really <laughs> rude though. I say bring back the Blackberry. Man, Blackberry tried to make a comeback. Uh, it, was, it was a few years ago, but it just dang man, it hit, man. These these iPhones, it just. I, I really can't use an Android. Like I've, I've tried it, you know, mm -hmm. and stuff like that, but I really can't navigate. I don't know if I'm just getting old or, or what it is, but it's ah. hard for me to navigate an Android. Oh my goodness, like, you get old, man. Yeah, you get no, old. definitely. <laughs> I'd be like, oh, like, man, just give me my iPhone, man. It's great. Okay, so um, drop top or SUV? Uh, SUV. I, I never really care for drop tops or nothing like that. I like SUVs, especially for times like these, mm -hmm. where it's fucking snow and ice and all, all yeah, that a stuff. A degree outside. Nigga, I like to throw my shit in, in four-wheel drive and do what I need to do. There and preferably is. pickup trucks. You know, I, I love okay. pickup trucks, you know, because it's it, it so versatile. You know, you can do a lot with them. Um, okay, so, you know, I, I definitely prefer uh, SUV. You know, convertibles and all that, yeah, it, it, it look cute. You Thank know, you. It's, it's fun to, you know, drive on vacation, and all, all that stuff. But yeah, as far as my vehicle, I gotta have an SUV. I feel it. Okay. Uh, 
beach house or a cabin? Oh man, I'm I'm a, I'm, I'm a nature boy uh, by heart, so I, I want to say cabin. You know, beach okay. house sound fun, but I I, I, I like being in, in cabin. Okay. You know, like okay. with with the bears and the and, and the and the deer and, mm -mm. The, and mm -mm. you know and all that no. stuff. Like you know, of course the, the beach house. You know, I think that'd be the obvious answer. You know, for most people. But you know, for me, I I'd rather have a cat. Okay, I actually would rather have a beach house. Oh yeah, no, <laughs> definitely. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Beach house. <laughs> <laughs> definitely. Watch a sitcom or watch a crime drama. Um. Probably sitcom, um, mm -hmm. you know, and I and I think that's going to be like the new wave here in Detroit. You, really? Yeah, you, you're going to start seeing sitcoms because 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 Tubi is is asking for them. So probably over the past five or six months, people they've been working towards putting out sitcoms. Now see, now wait a minute yeah. because you know your girl low key kind of funny. Yeah, yeah, Ain't nobody yeah. told me. Yeah, and I'm telling you, man, like, come on, because, and this one thing with, with the sitcoms is the cost of production is a lot lower oh. than the movie, right? Okay. So, you know, we got we got studios around here, so really, like, we, we can shoot a whole sitcom in, in your studio. Like, well, just, just being real, you know what I'm saying? Like, We're going to come back to the whole yeah. studio conversation, all the studios yeah. around, because... Yeah. We need to come back around oh, today. Definitely, yep. Definitely, definitely, yeah, <laughs> but you know, but to answer the question, I, I love sitcoms. Like even from Martin, Living Single, Jamie Foxx. Like anytime I can catch one of those on TV, I damn near stop everything I'm doing and, and you know watch a couple episodes. You know, because it just brings back so many childhood memories, nostalgic memories. Yeah, yeah. You know, so it just you know I, I love sitcoms. Okay, well then that leads right into my next question: Martin or Fresh Prince? Oh. Shit, that's tough. Um, man, I got to, man, they really like this, but the fact that Martin was, you know, based in Detroit, I, I got to go with Martin. it. You Let's know go what with I mean? It. I just, I got to, I, I love Fresh Prince. That was, you know, just growing up, that was like one of the first sitcoms that I really kind of remember. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, Martin, you know, shit, man, that's. You know, they represented Detroit, even yeah. though it wasn't really shot in Detroit, but it was still supposed. Yeah, the representation so, of Detroit. Yep, yeah, exactly. So. so I like that one too. Yeah. I, that's a hard one. Yeah, yeah, no, that's it's it, it's just tough. I mean, it's really like fifty fifty, you know, like for real. But I I got a favorite Martin, you know. Okay. I got to. Cat Williams or Kevin Hart? Man, I really don't like either of them like i'm oh, I'm, not, I'm not really a big comedy guy like i i find different stuff funny like i don't like stand up comedy ain't your thing yeah like it's when people are sitting there telling jokes like i just be like uh man it, it was one stand up no two uh mike epps and jamie fox i remember jamie fox had a had a stand up where you talking about the tally whackers and all, all that stuff I, I forgot the name of it <laughs> and the uh kings the kings of comedy uh from from a while ago, like other than that, I really don't find stand up funny. Oh, um, you, you know what I'm saying? Because it's like me, I, I find like certain certain like is everyday stuff funny. You know what I'm saying? Like okay, that's why you like the sitcoms work. Yeah, got to be situational. Yeah, right. You know, like I, I don't like somebody sitting there just telling jokes. It's just, I just be like, all right, you know, like I, you, I, I, I do. Don't know. Yeah. I will tell me a joke. Yeah, see, like I'm not a, <laughs> and then and it's like another thing. Just you know, me, I'm kind of getting off topic a little bit, but I, I'm not really a jokester. Like I don't, I don't like to like crack jokes and stuff like that. Cause oh. I feel like there's always some kind of truth behind the joke. So like when when people be cracking jokes on on other people, I kind of feel like that's how they really feel about them. But they, they're trying to make it, you know, like and I I never you know you can ask you know my my family friends. Like, I never crack jokes on people. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, with, with Javon, but that's something that, you know, everybody's been cracking the joke, so I kind of just, you know, blame him for everything. I was about but, to say, like, you don't seem, like, super serious. Yeah, well, <laughs> when that's just the thing, like, I'm not, but but it's just, like, I don't know, because, like, to me, I try to see the, the good in people, right? Mm -hmm. So, like, I don't, I don't look at somebody like, oh, damn, you know, that nigga shoes dirty, or he he do uh -huh. this. Like, I don't, I don't you know, I, I never really been that type of person, you know what I'm saying? So then, like, when I was around it, people, everybody cracking jokes, like, nigga, don't crack no jokes on me. You know what I'm saying? Like, I just always just stood on that. You know what I'm saying? 
So you know, but it just it, it just weird. Like I don't, I don't like cracking jokes on people. I don't like like making fun of people. I like you know promoting people and you know give, giving them positive energy. And, you do. You know. You know what I'm saying. So and that's how I've been since I was a kid. It's not even the you know mature Dewan. This is the five six year old Dewan. I never crack jokes on people. Mm. But it, and it's funny because my my older brother he's the same way, and I didn't know he was that way until one day he he was cutting my hair, and then we were just kind of talking. I'm like, no, like you sound like me, you know what I'm saying? And I, I never knew. That. I thought it was, it was just me. But I don't, I don't like to like make people feel a certain way, you know what I'm saying? And I like, feel you. Talk about them, talk about their hair or their shoes or clothes or you know whatever it is, you know what I'm saying? I feel you. It might, it might be funny, you know, whatever. We crack jokes, but like some people take that shit serious, you mm-hmm. know. So I don't know. I might be over, overthinking the situation, you know what I'm saying? But I just, I never really cared. You to not crack though. Jokes. You not because most times when you do listen to comedy, mm-hmm. it it do be true. Yeah, they no, just say it in a funny way, so it just depends on yeah. if they talking about somebody's shoes yeah. or if they talking about how they feel about a political stance or something. It, exactly, it, it usually yep. will be some truth. In. And and that's probably the reason why I love that uh, Jamie Foxx stand up because I can relate to a lot of stuff that he was saying about like the Taliban and you know all, all that stuff because that's how I, I really felt. You know what I'm saying? But mm-hmm. like Cat Williams. Like I've been hearing everybody talk about his thing he, he got going on, but I'm like, he's not funny. You know, he, he was funny in, in Friday and next mm-hmm. Friday, you know, when he, he was doing all that stuff, like that that was funny, you know what I'm saying? But his stand up, I mean he's like, no, nah, but if I had to pick, I, I gotta go with Kevin Hart. Okay. You know, like I I pick Kevin Hart over Cat Williams. Cat Williams, he just you know, I don't, I don't know what it is. I feel it. Oh, <laughs> that one lit a, lit a spark. Okay. Right, 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 right. I was yes. talking about when I was in first <laughs> grade. And, and, you know, but see, I don't crack jokes on people, man. See, I, you know. <laughs> but, no, That's but, what you're here to do. Right, yeah. That's what no, you're here to definitely, do. definitely. So let's see. Um, do, 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 do. Hmm. No, I don't want to ask that one. No, I can ask that one because I already know the answer to that one. Um, so, all right, you already know the answer to it. <laughs> yep, I know the answer. You want to know what it was? Yeah, yeah. Dark liquor or light liquor. Oh, oh yeah, oh, oh yeah. That's, that's easy. Yeah. Crown, crown me up, baby. Put, put, the, put the crown on. You already know. And, and it's crazy because I used to laugh at people that drunk uh, Crown Royal, but it's like, it's my favorite drink because it, it gets me right where I need to be. I wake up the next morning feeling good. I be feeling no, the same no, no way. hangover. Like, you know listen, what I'm saying? Back like, up at it, like yeah. like nothing ever happened. Oh, no, like seriously, like so, like when I'm on set, and this is I don't know how I started drinking it, but like when I was on set, you know, I, I realized like you know this is getting me just right where I I need to be. I be focused, loose, you know, because I mean sometimes man, you be on set, it be thirty people watching. You. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Uh-huh. Like, it, it, man, it's like when, when I be on set, it be like a, a crowd of people here, a crowd of people there. They they friends, you know. You know, my dad want to pull up and watch. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, it be it be thirty people just sitting there, like like looking at you. So, I I actually feed off off the energy, but it does create some type of nervous energy. You know what I'm saying? I ain't gonna yeah. lie. So I I gotta take a couple. You know, shots of uh, a crown, and it get you right where I need to be. You know what I'm saying? Like yep. if it was some 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 tequila or vodka, then I might I might not better perform how, how I need to. But this this crown, man, it get you right get where you I together. need to be. I'm telling you, all right, right there. No matter how much, how little, you know, two shots, a little cup, I'm good. And it's always here. Like yep. we like, cause yeah. that's my drink too. I'm telling so, you, man, I, I love it. I love it. Okay, well here we go. Mm-hmm. Listen, we all over. They need to be paying us for that because man, y'all hear that? No, Come on, no, that crown royal. Like, and I think, kind of like moving forward, I'm, I'm gonna start promoting it. You know, in my films, like I'm, I'm gonna be drinking crown, like in in the actual movie. Like, hey, you know, like I'm gonna pour it up. Like, man, y'all, y'all gotta start paying me. You know, like straight up, man. Because I'm telling you, <laughs> like this, this all I drink. Like nothing gets me. Right there, like I don't, I don't drink nothing else, but. Uh, mhm. Yeah. There it is. Um. Oh, Jay Z or Nas? Man, that's a man. Like you, you really asking some some great questions. <laughs> like for real. We even got to you. Every every that's question you ask is really like fifty fifty. So, but as of today, I'm with Jay Z. Okay. Now, back in the early two thousands, I was I was a Nas head. I was like, fuck Jay Z. You know what I'm saying, Ether. <laughs> And I, I really, I didn't like Jay Z, um, 
because and, and I always been the type of person that went against the grain because everybody was riding. The, I remember when Jay Z and Nas first started beefing. Everybody was like, what Nas beefing with Jay Z? He can't mess with Jay Z. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh, Nas is is cool. Yeah. So I I kind of took liking to Nas because I was when I was young, like that was one of the first CDs that I bought. It was uh, I Am. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, and that, that whole album, you can play it all the way through. So I'm like, nigga, I, I rock with, with with Nas. You know what I'm saying? Because Jay-Z, he was more commercial. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like, he had, you know, like, 96, 97, he had a lot of stuff that was on MTV, BET, and all that. Nas had albums, you know what I'm saying? Like, yes. for real hip-hop, you know, guys. Played in your car. You, you know what I'm saying? Like, Nas, yeah. he, he was dropping stuff. And where I, I played Nas all the way through. And I just I felt like Nas never really got the full you know respect, so that's why when him and Jay started beefing, I'm like, man, Nas is that guy. I with him. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but but as of right now, today, I'm I'm kind of in favor of, of Jay Z. Like just his his longevity and just you know right now he he can drop a song and it's just gonna be cold. Like Nas, on the other hand, his, his last few albums, yeah, as a Nas fan, I like him, but they. Still, he you know, nah, still kind of just like, uh, like all right, but Jay Z, he one. just, 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 just keep just doing different stuff, and it's just like, and it's just a hit, you know what I'm saying? Even, even like that, that uh, 444, like, I'm like, man, what is this? And the more and more I listen to him, I'm like, oh, he got another classic, even, even uh, the album, a lot of people don't like Kingdom Come, that, that album really fired for real, like, if you really sit down and listen to it, he got some hits on, on that boy. He like nah. I don't, I'm telling you, man. Like this, you about to go make home, folks go and listen go to it home again. and listen to it. You be like, oh shit, he got some. Okay, you know what I'm All saying? Right. Cause that was the album. I'm like, whatever. But then, like the the more and more you you know you start listening to it, like um, it's it's one, one track on there. I've been playing a lot on my story. The uh, I think it's called like the, the interlude or something like that. Uh -huh. And it's just like, I I got it on repeat because he just he on there just talking crazy. You know what I'm saying? Like I, I think that was the song where he was like, uh, "You can't fit this hustle inside of a rapper or, or something like that." And then, you and then he was like, uh, "Yeah, like I'm he listen back." Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like, man, he he's talking crazy on there. You know what I'm saying? So then, uh, Moolah Films had posted it. He was like, "I'm just a filmmaker disguised as a as a hustler or something like that." Because you know he said he's just a rapper disguised as a as a hustler. So mm -hmm. like we filmmakers, you know, disguised as well, we hustlers disguised as filmmakers. You know what I'm saying? Because that's really because that's what y'all doing. You know what I'm saying? Like, yes. like for real. Like we really doing something that we love doing, but we we just hustlers at, at heart. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. We really filmmakers, though. For real, for real. So you know, it's just like now. You know, I don't know when the album came out, but now listening to it, I like, man, Jay, he was, he was talking crazy on that motherfucker. Yeah, we playing that again. For real, for real. We probably gonna have it going. Yeah, I'm telling you, man, Kingdom, like Kingdom Come, man, check it out, for real, like, All right. that, that was one of them albums, everybody just kind of just, whoop, whoop, you know, but nah, uh, come back and listen to it. All right, I'm coming back to it. Yeah. All right, then, listen, one final question. Mm hmm Tim telling tales or anybody else? Uh, of course, Tim telling tales, man, come on, what, what kind of question is that? I know. That's why, that's why when you, you DM me, I'm like, oh, man, about my, my time, like, <laughs> man, you know, like. Uh, All right, Dewan, so. Mm -hmm. We are done with preferences, and we talked a little bit about, you know, personal stuff. Mm -hmm. But I want to still talk about personal stuff, but from the film industry mm -hmm. aspect of things. So I know that you have been in the business for a long time. Yeah. You've been doing films and stage plays. Tell me a little bit about when you first started in... I shouldn't even say film industry, but the industry, the entertainment industry. Okay. Um, so I, I first started uh, with uh, Diamond Girls. I, I did a play with uh, Joe Smith. Mm -hmm. So Diamond Girls, and we, we were shooting the first season of uh, McGraw Ave as well. So it was kind of like okay. neck and neck, right? Because how it all, you know, kind of reignited, you know, my acting situation, I was doing a podcast as well. Okay. And uh, Thomas Harris and uh, Martell Lane uh, came on. And they, they had just shot 5-0, you know, so they came on, you know, whatever. Because I always had a passion for acting. You know, when I was in elementary school, I was always like the, the lead character in the school plays and stuff like that. But as you, as you, you know, as I got older, 
acting wasn't cool. You know, it was like, oh, nigga, you acting, you know. So it was kind of like I started drifting off into basketball, mm -hmm. girls, you know, football, you know, stuff mm -hmm. like that. So it was like people that wanted to act, they went to like DSA or whatever. And then I went to one for high school. So we had drama class, but it was like all, all girls, mm -hmm. you know. So it wasn't really a, a, a place a comfort place, you know, for us guys to go and act, right? So um, I feel like Murder Pain, uh, Martell Lane, Thomas, and Moolah Films, they made acting cool again. And they they actually kind of reignited my, you know, flame, you know, so so to speak, for acting. Um, so I, I got back into it. Uh, 2016, I did a play with Joe Smith. I was, I was just an, an extra. You know, I worked with uh, Kamal Smith. Um, uh, El, El Brianna, uh, she was in it. Um, who else? Uh, Tristan. Was A Red? No, so A Red was in, in Diamond Leon. Girls in the in the Diamond Girls before that one. So, so look, it, it's just crazy because ain't uh, A, A Red played the same character that L played. Okay. But they they end up you know switching. Because gotcha. I, I don't know why Red didn't, you know, play it. This was, like, in 2016. I think she was in it in 2015. Okay. So okay. I, I don't know what happened. But, yeah, so L played, you know, the same character that Red played. Gotcha. So I, I just played a, a cop. I had, like, three lines. But it was just being on stage and, like, just, like, the whole, the whole auditorium was just dark and, like, all the lights on you. Mm -hmm. And it was just, like, that, that rush, it was just something that was just, like, Damn, like I, I ain't felt this since I was in fifth grade. You know what I'm saying? And it, it just kind of fed my spirit, and I just I kept going, I kept going. I took acting classes. Um, I did uh, a McGraw app. Okay. Then I met Dennis Reed. I was doing uh, marketing for Dennis Reed, and he, you know, he didn't know I acted. You know, so he was like, uh, he's like, you act? I'm like, yeah, you know. So he started putting me in his uh, first lady movie. Um, uh -huh. You know, so I, and I, I started getting you know bigger roles and, and things like that, and uh, man, I've, I've been off and running like ever since. Like, and it's crazy because now that I'm talking about it, like I, I've been back in the game for eight years now. So I came back in 2016. Mm -hmm. I was you know 2024. So it's like, man, I'm a I'm a better around here now. You are. You know what I'm saying? But yeah. you know, especially guys like uh, Kamal. Um, Definitely, Kamal. You know, Kamal. He he he's been probably one of the most influential guys, teachers. You know that I've I've come across. Like Kamal has taught me a lot. I think working with him on Diamond Girls the movie helped me elevate my my acting from you know here to to really taking it to mm -hmm. to to the next level. Like Kamal, man, he he's a great teacher. I love anytime he, he's directing something. Like I, I love it because I feel like my performance is always that much better. Come on, come on, he's he's the truth. Yeah, yeah, I like come on. He got oh man, I'm you know you, he man. was come up on. here. We had a good time. Yeah, man, come on, come on, is the truth, man. He's a he's a he's a great teacher. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like he just you know very he, patient. Yeah, too. yeah, very patient. you know. And it's like I said, like he helped me elevate my acting, you know, and, and get me to that that next level. Mm -hmm. I say, you know, between him and, and Deb Lang Spencer, um, I, we worked with her a lot on Street Legal. Okay. Deb really helped me tap into that next level. You mm -hmm. know, because Deb, she's another one. She, she knows how to communicate. She knows how to teach. She 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 she, she sees the good in you. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Versus some directors, they just like, I want you to do this. I want you to do that. You know, and me, and I don't know if you, you know, really paid attention in, in Street Legal, but most most of the, the people on there, you know, they were, were kind of like high, you know, like everybody mad, you know, screaming. I'm like, man, I, I want to be that laid back, the chill, one. cool, you know, like e even when I'm mad, mm -hmm. I, I can show that I'm mad in different ways. You know, I, I don't want to have to scream. And, and Deb, Deb kind of like empowered me to be that character, you know, in street music. You know, because, yeah. like, I, I didn't want to just, oh, you know, screaming mad and all, all that stuff. I wanted to be cool. Even even when I'm pissed off, like, I want you to see that I'm pissed, not hear that I'm pissed. I like you, you know, You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So, you know, I, I wanted to switch it up a, a little bit. So. You said that you were taking acting lessons, mm -hmm. right? So is there 
someone who just does the coaching, like a one-on-one, or is there a school that you went to? Mm-hmm. Like, where did you get that instruction from? So I did I did a, a, a several different um, classes, right? So I did the, the Moolah Films course, uh, Thomas, Thomas L. Harris. You know, he, he taught me a lot. I took a class with um, Brian Taylor. Um, okay. Brian Taylor is... Is, is is the goat? Like he's he's out cold. I did a class. I'm sorry, I I forgot her name, but it was an, an online course. Okay. Um, it was a lady out of Atlanta. I don't, her, her name it, it'll come back to me. Mm-hmm. I took that class. I took classes with Kamal Smith. Okay. Um, so all of these workshops that we see them promoting and everything. Oh yeah. Is really how a lot of these faces are getting their. Yeah. Their, themselves in the film no, definitely. and getting better at the at the art. Yep, because with, with the Moolah Films class, I was a part of their first class of the Moolah Films Actor Association. Okay. I was I was in that first group of, of people. You know, so uh-huh. then if you see like your Elizabeth Foxes, your uh, Carla Strong's, Chris Collins, um, Kia B, um, you know, like th- there's a lot, lot more people than probably missing, but we all came through the the Moolah Films class and in the same year no so I was I was just, first okay you know what I'm saying even one. even uh um uh Eastside Boom okay yeah yep yeah Eastside Eastside Boom uh Cam Cam Cottrell you know he's he's in a lot of yep. films yep um but there, there's a lot of people that came through that class and not it's not intentional but how how this how Moolah Films operate it's really kind of like a boot camp like I'll be joking mm-hmm. but like the way they teach you and like even when you're on set and all that, people that, that came through that class have a different different energy to them. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Because you, you have to be able to pivot, you know, while you're on set. You might you might study your your script. And this is why, you know, I tell a lot of new actors, you know, and even a lot of, you know, old actors, don't try to memorize every word in this script, right? Break down your scenes and 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 understand what your character's motive is understand the barriers that this this character might face when trying to re- reach that that goal don't try to remember word from word because a lot of times you might even watch a film and they, they just reading words reading words they don't, they don't know what it means or none of that and we can tell you you see what i'm saying like <laughs> yeah, really really understand what your character's goal is in that in that scene you know what i'm saying like the scene might just be for me to I'm trying to I'm trying to convince you to cook me some chicken or something. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? So just just kind of know that in in your mind, and don't just read the the fucking words on on the script. Because honestly, when you see me on on TV, I probably freestyle seventy five percent of you know what is what's on there. Like just mm-hmm. just being real. You know what I'm saying? Like of course, I, it's certain key words that you can't fuck up names or. You know, if, if something happened, you know, down the line or whatever, there's certain things that you really got to stick to. But I, I never remember a script word from word. I, I'm remembering the scenarios. I'm, I'm understanding how, you know, my cat, I mean, my scene mate is, mm-hmm. is thinking. And I'm, I'm just rolling. You know what I'm saying? Like, every, every time you see me on TV, that shit probably was not on, on the script. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, just, just being real. Like, you know, like in, in rehearsal, directors like, oh, no, you missed the word. I'm like, okay, you know, I I go over it, but when we you know set, mm-hmm. it's it, as long as it sounds good and as, as long as I'm sticking to the to the story, they, they love it every time. So you say, "Stop! You gonna do what you want to do?" Yeah, okay. yeah. Okay. I mean, because <laughs> because the, no, but the whole thing is, you you want you want to be comfortable on there, like, and that that's one of the the main things that I don't like when I'm just seeing people just like reading words. Uh-huh. Like, just, and like I, I can tell, like okay, yeah, they just read wolves on the strip. Like make it you, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like the the writer when they when they wrote it, they they listened to it in in their head, right? But you, the actor, the character, you got to bring that character to life. Yep. You see what I'm saying? So it's not gonna be exactly like how how this this writer thought it was gonna be, but you got you got to add your own shit to it, and and make them be like, oh damn, I I ain't even think about that, but I love it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like when you when you comfortable and you you know your shit, you can you can play around with it a little bit. Now if you don't know your shit, then nigga, don't don't listen to what I'm saying. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So But you should. Yeah, no, definitely. You definitely you know should know your like, stuff. Definitely, like, man, really. But you gotta become the character then. Cause yeah. now you are 
the person, yeah. the, the character no, unquote, seriously. versus just the person who's delivering the line. No, definitely, because even like with Street League, we're about to start shooting season two, and yeah. a, a wardrobe hit me up, and I, I was speaking as Justin. I said, hey, you know, usually I wear such and such, I wear this, wear that. You know what I'm saying? Because that's the, the character that I created. Dennis didn't tell me to wear uh, uh, a tie bar or, you know, the designer suit. I, w- I wanted to go with a more simple, clean look. And even like Javon, he, he was more flashy. You know, he, mm-hmm. he had he had more stuff going on. That's what we came up with. So now we got to continue that same thing. So Y'all that's got why stylist. I, yeah, you okay. know what I'm saying? Like, I, I got to let him know. Like, I, I like to wear clean stuff. I don't like all them loud colors. I wear navies, grays, blacks. You know, you can throw on a nice little Burberry tie or, okay. you know, a, a Louis yeah. tie or something like that, tie bar, watch. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm just, I'm clean. Nah, Javon, he gonna, he gonna wear all the different, he is. you know, colors <laughs> and all, all that type of stuff. That, but that wasn't what I wanted Justin to be. I wanted Justin to be that, you know, guy, hey, you know, he got to talk to people, whatever. He can't wear all, all that stuff. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, just, just being real. That's why I had to relate that to, to wardrobe because, hey, they might not know. So I, I helped develop the character Justin, from his wardrobe to how he moved, how he talked, like I helped develop that character. Okay. So, so if you had to pick between the two, look, I didn't went back to a little preference question. Right. Uh huh. Stage play or film? Um, I w- I would say stage play because as I mentioned earlier, it's just that that feeling when you on the stage. When I tell you, like it would be thousands of people watching you, but mm-hmm. you you can't really see them because it's dark. And you got all these bright lights on, right? Mm-hmm. And it's like, you can't fuck up. So, like, that rush just does something to me. It's just it like, does. you just be like, you know what I'm saying? It so, does. and even even if you do fuck up, just going back to my point, just ad lib. Yeah. Because they ain't going to know it. You know what I'm saying? The only way they know it is if you go up there and you like, be like, oops, oh, oops. damn, oh, I, I forgot my line. You know what I'm saying? Like, yep. you gotta, and the thing is, you got to have enough confidence to, to really know who you are. In that situation, in in ad lib, like we didn't we didn't fucked up a couple times on on stage plays, but nobody knew. Uh-huh. You know what I'm saying? Cause we gonna we gonna keep on keep rolling. On going. It ain't mess around to be like the best part of the film, yeah. the, uh, the play. No, no, like, like, oh, like shit, that works. You know what I'm saying? And, and the best part of of the film, like a lot of stuff. Like I said, when you watch me, a lot of that stuff is just straight up freestyle. Uh-huh. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And it is just something that I, cause I wanted to make it feel natural. And, and and not not just a dialogue where oh, okay this person saying something this person saying something like no I want to make it a conversation I want to cut you off I, I want to you know try to out out talk you or whatever you know what I'm mm-hmm. saying or whatever the situation is so like a lot of stuff that I do and I try to kind of you know let my you know peers know as well you know hey man this make it your own like let's have a real conversation versus you waiting for. A, Key word, you know, uh-huh. and then you go like, no, man, like let's actually talk. You know what I'm saying? Like we we having a conversation. Yeah, yeah. it comes off very conversational yeah. in uh-huh. a lot of the films that you play in. Definitely. So it makes sense that you would say that. Yeah. Do you have a favorite um, at lib moment in the film? Man, so uh, as of right now, the film that I'm kind of like riding that I, I love is uh, by any means. Okay. Um. So like, there were like a lot of scenes, but I think my scene with Shelby, um, it was a scene when we, we was in the bedroom when she kind of checked me, um, you know, about my my relationship with with Misha, mm-hmm. and like that that whole scene, like I was just like I put myself in the mindset like, okay, we we gonna do this, and like we just kind of just like we we was going going back at it, like she was really mad. She like, nigga, you really pissed me off, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> And that, that was the whole the whole goal behind it. And the thing was, like, we worked on it, but we didn't. We never took it to that that level. But you know what I'm saying. But when I was talking to her, like, I, I was just so rude and just like, you know what I'm saying. Like, it just it, it triggered something. Like, and she she pushed me in. Like, we we ain't work on none of that stuff in rehearsal. Cause in rehearsal, <laughs> we just all right, you know, we mad or whatever. But like, man, when we when, when they said action. Like we was we was like nose to nose. We, we was going at it like man. That probably one of my favorite scenes. Um, you know, like probably like most recently. You know, of course I got mm-hmm. a recency bias going on. I, I didn't did so many projects, but yeah, so many by any means. Uh, at that scene with with Shelby, that, that probably was like my one of my favorite scenes. Okay. Yeah. Oh yeah, that was a good one. Mm-hmm. That was a good one. So now. 
of course, everybody sees your name come up on the screen because you're acting in the film. Mm -hmm. But they also see your name come up as executive producer as yeah. well. Yeah. You do a lot of that. Yeah, a lot. A lot. Yeah. And it, it's funny that you say that because a lot of people don't know that. Um, and I'm not one of those guys that got to put my name in front of everything. You know, right. like, oh, this was the wine for a film. So the the reasoning behind that is because I built a lot of relationships with a lot of people here. So I, I was blessed to really kind of get into this game early as an executive producer. Mm -hmm. um, so my, my first big film was First Lady Three with, with Dennis Reed. And also my first solo executive production was Tina and Lori. And that movie, I, I hated it, but that movie did numbers. So oh. I, I, you know, so I, I took that and I was able to reinvest in, in a lot of other films. Tina and, and Lori. Yeah. We can still watch it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So hey, we can hey, see why yeah. you hated it. Yeah, you well, know? I mean, but see the, but see the, <laughs> the people, the people loved it. See, and it's like with me, I honestly, I hate all my projects. Like, wait, what? Yeah, no, no, because it's like when, when I'm watching it, I'm looking for everything that's bad. I don't, I don't see shit good in, in, in none of my projects. So why? No, no, just like, but just, just being real, but that helps me get better, right? Like, because I'm looking like, ah, oh, shit, I, you know, we should we should have did this. I, I should have, and that, that helped me as an actor, like, watching myself. Mm -hmm. That I probably was the most powerful shit that I, I've done, like, getting different people to break down my scenes and tell me, okay, yeah, I think you could have did this better. You, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like, because, you know, you actually can, can sit here and watch it watch yourself with somebody else and they can they can kind of teach you to me that was like some of the most powerful shit you know what i'm saying because i'm watching myself and every time i watch myself i i kind of just what, what they be saying now is it's cringy you know what i'm saying because yeah. i i see everything bad that i'm doing but it, it helps me on, on the next project because i'm not gonna do it no more i like, feel you you know what i'm saying but just like with the conversation about the stage plays if you mess up you keep on going folks don't even mm -hmm. know that you messing up Mm. I would probably say the same thing when it comes to the films as well. Yep. Don't be that hard on yourself because it is mm. very obvious when you have, you know, a better caliber of actors mm -hmm. versus some others. Right. Oh, yeah. You would be one of them. Oh, thank you. So thank you, thank pat you. on the back to that. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> and no, for real, but I really, I appreciate that because I really take pride in it, right? And I, and I take pride in, in being versatile. And like, you know, I, I watch to see what's going on in the two group, people tagging and stuff. Yes. But I think uh, one of the things I kind of hang my hat on is being versatile, having range, right? Being able to, to be a, a street nigga or a lawyer or a cop or a, a father, a uncle, you know what I'm saying? Like I've played a variety of, of roles. And I had, a, had a conversation with a guy yesterday. He was like, man, he was like, you know, he just kind of, he was explaining a lot of my roles, right? He was like, Sometimes you you talk like this a nigga that's dumb or whatever. Then he's like, you can flip me. You can be, you know, talk like you educated. And he was like, that that alone shows that you really take pride in, in your acting because mm -hmm. you get some niggas that play a lawyer and they, they they still talking regular. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? And then you get some no niggas that you. be trying to play <laughs> a, a street nigga. And he be like, nah, that nigga he ain't no street nigga. You know what I'm saying? He was like, bro. He's like, and I'm a, I'm a very critical. You know, movie watching. He was like, your your ability to to go from those two ends, you know, from those two extremes, says a lot about you. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? But it's funny because it really kind of like it's who I am as a person. Like if you ask five different people who who is the one for, you might get five different answers. You know what I'm saying? Because <laughs> it all depends on the situation I'm in. I can be this, I can be that. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? But it was something that I was always able to. You know, be like, you know, uh, I can I can blend in in, in any type of crowd. So I kind of took that same approach to film as well. Okay. So EP, <clears throat> and you've been doing this for quite a while. And that I'm sure led into the development of your own studio, right? Well, no. So pretty much I, I just kind of work with everybody else. Okay. So I, I'm thinking about getting, getting my own studio, but... No, I, I just work with Lisa. You know, she she got her own studio. Okay. Dennis, uh, Moolah Films. You know, gotcha. so pretty much, I I got my own office. But I did. I I just bought a house. 
I'm thinking about turning my, my house into a, a studio. I'm like, oh. you know, hey, you know, I can I can kill two birds. I can, you know, pay this you want mortgage. Everybody and, coming to the house though. Well, not not everybody, right, but you right. know, but um, but no, I, I was definitely thinking about it. But no, I, I haven't made that jump yet. But I'm definitely thinking about it. Okay. Definitely, definitely. Okay. Yeah. 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 You know, yeah. definitely. Yeah. <laughs> it's 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 giving like that's the next step. Yeah, because you know, and I think moving forward as an EP, like I I've, I've created a lot of opportunities for a lot of people. Right? Yeah. But I think moving forward, I, I got to get a little bit more selfish, and in in a sense to where, you know, I, I built relationships with a lot of people, so if I want to help everybody. I want to. Hey, okay, here you you want a movie? You want a movie? Okay. Woo, woo. But now I feel like that deed is is done. You know, now it's time for me to focus on you. The one, you know what I'm saying? Like, I I never was was the main character in, in any of my my films. I wanted to earn that shit, right? Like, mm -hmm. even from Street Legal to Dirty D to um, uh, uh, Ultimate Betrayal. Like, I, I wanted people to see me and see my acting. I wanted other EPs to to book me. Versus, I I didn't want to utilize the the cheat code and. I'm, I'm the EP, so I'm the main character. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like I wanted, I wanted to work for that shit. So I, I do have cameos. You know what uh -huh. I'm saying? Like I, yeah. I pop up a couple scenes or whatever, <laughs> but I never book myself as as the lead guy. But I feel like now I'm, I've reached the status. You know, thanks to to Lisa, Dennis, Splurge, Joe Smith. Like these people actually casting me for big roles. Uh, India Chardé, you know. And, by any means, mm -hmm. you know, can't forget Andy. Um, but these people, they uh, cast me, you know, for these big roles. So now I feel like, okay, I'm working. People recognizing my my work, and now now they want to book me. Now I can book myself. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So now moving forward, yeah, nigga, you know, I'm gonna be the EP and the motherfucking <laughs> lead guy. You know what I'm saying? Because now I've I reached that that status. I work for. It. Yeah. So you can't you can't say. Oh, nigga, you you cheated. You just you know buying buying your way into it. Like, nigga, I worked hard for it to where I got booked mm -hmm. by other EPs. Yeah, you, you see what I'm saying? So, nigga, I didn't I, I didn't put the work in. Now it's, it's time for me to you know do me. You okay? So I gotta go back again. Listen, my mind just be all over the place, and I want to ask about this. Um. So you talked about how you don't be talking about people, right? Mm -hmm. You don't like folks talk about folks and right, all right, of that, right? right? Because mm -hmm. it'd be some truth in it and yeah. all that. Oh, and so what's so interesting about you saying that is how you respond to people that be talking about you. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. You are faithful to commenting back to them people mm -hmm. in them groups, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. And I don't even go hold you. Sometimes I be feeling like Y'all is my my god brothers and my god sisters, and yeah. I don't be like when they be talking about right, you. Right, and I right, be right. ready to like <laughs> go ask some folks, and I'm like, okay, Tim, pipe down, mm -hmm. like chill. Yep. But you will definitely come. You will make your comment, yeah. and you always keep it classy. Yeah, yeah. You really do. Yeah. You ain't never like got sideways with nobody in the group. No, no, because okay. and see my. You know, the the logic behind it is this. You know, if, if I show somebody that they made me feel away, mm -hmm. they, they just going to keep on doing it. You know what I'm saying? And it's going to show my character. You know what I'm saying? But And, and that, it's funny that you related what I said earlier to that because that's that's what I stand on. Like, I could easily come back and crack a joke, you know, whatever, you know, and, and roast somebody. But it's like, what am I really trying to, to, to accomplish when I do that? You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Because I don't know what what this person going through. Me, I, I'm straight. I'm healthy. You know, man, my my family's good. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. I, I don't have anything to, to be mad about. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. some of these people, man, I, I might crack a joke on them, and, and, and they might they might really feel away. way. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like, there ain't no telling what's, what's really going on. Like, and I don't want to be the one that makes somebody feel bad. People, they, they can't make me feel bad. Like, they, it was roasting me about uh, when I was in the indictment. And it's, it's funny because, look, so we shot that toward the end of, uh, that was like the end of February of 2020. So, uh -huh. you know, the pandemic happened like a week later. Yeah. So I was, I was sick as hell. Like I was, I probably didn't eat for real for probably like 10 days. You know what I'm saying? While like, you was filming that movie? No. So, or? so, uh, prior, prior to it. So I think like maybe okay. a day, a day before we started shooting, 
I started yeah. feeling better. Okay. You, you know what I'm saying? But, you know, but mine. Everybody know it was COVID, though. Right, exactly. Because a week later, then all this coronavirus and all, yep. all this shit came up. So I, I probably had it. But I'm like, man, I was Damn. fucked up. Like, I, I couldn't eat. Like, I was just feeling weak. Like, so I lost a lot of weight and I lost probably like 15 pounds. You know what I'm saying? Wow. And I couldn't get a haircut. So I, I just shaved my, my head. I shaved my beard. And I'm like, okay, I'm about to be the chief of police. So I, I wanted to look old, you know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? So I wanted to just shave just is everything. I wanted to look like a cop. And it, now looking back on it, I'm like, man, why the fuck did I do that? You know what I'm saying? And then people, they, they posting, they like, oh, where, where's this guy at? Like, nigga, I'm right here, nigga. Like, I look different, for real, nigga. Like, don't post this no more. Like, delete this, man. <laughs> but no, but, you know, it's like I said, and people, they, they crack jokes or whatever it was, man, but. It's like, hey, you know, it, it, it is what it is. You know what I'm saying? But I, you really had a serious situation, and here they come. Yeah, Fuck but, trash. Yeah, but you know, I'm here. You know, I'm healthy, and it was like, you know, to me, the, in, in the comments that I, I really focused on was a lot of the positive comments on there. Yeah. And people was like, oh man, the glow up was real. <laughs> oh, you know, he he can he can play any role. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, it was people that they were still on there, like taking up for me, and, and that that's what I really seen. A lot of the comments talking about I was like I was on crack and all that shit. Like it, it's funny because I did though. Like nigga, I'd be like, dog, man, take that movie off, man. Like I don't want nobody to see indictment. Who is Jonathan Carter? Because I I look horrible. You know what I'm saying? Like Not just, everybody about to go watch it. it. Right, exactly. But hey, you know, hey, it, it is what it is. And I'm I'm a man. You know, I, I can take a joke, whatever. Like hey, you know, I'm I'm good. You know what I'm saying? I'm healthy. Mm-hmm. I'm blessed. You know, my family's good. So it's cool, you know, man. You can, you can roast me and talk about me, whatever, but it's like, nigga, look at me now, motherfucker. You know uh-huh. what I'm saying? Yep. Like, nigga, and for the most part, very rarely do people actually say bad stuff about you. Right, right. You know exactly. Like, exactly. It's going to be an overwhelming amount of good comments. No, seriously, because yeah. even, even even on the post, the lady was looking for me, like, in a good way. I'm like, man, why would you be looking for this nigga? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? She's like, hey, has anybody seen this guy? Like, she, she wasn't even being funny. But everybody else came on. This nigga look like a crackhead. This nigga this and that. That's why I'm like, hey, fuck it. I'm about to, about to have fun with it. You know what I'm saying? Like, Cause you were trolling them people. Yeah, like, hey, you know, like, it is what it is. I can go on there like, nigga, look at you. Again, like, yeah, you, you know what I'm saying? But I, nigga, they be looking at me like, man, what kind of nigga is you? You know what yeah. I'm saying? Like, nah, Because I will like, look at you like that. Yeah, um, like, I'll always on. be so happy when you respond the way that you do. Yeah, it be like, man, it's come on. It's motivating, too, because I be like, you know what, Tam? When people start to talk about you, yeah. you know, you have to, you have to act like this. No, you know? no, definitely because it, no, for real, like, and when you, you put yourself out there in, in the public's eye, you have to be ready for, for the good and for the bad. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like, just, just being real. And luckily, I'm blessed to have way more good and, and bad, but it's like, nigga, the, the bad wasn't really that bad. Like, yeah, nigga, I was right. sick, nigga. I lost weight, and I thought, nigga, me shaving my head and my beard was a good idea, and it wasn't. So, <laughs> shit, I'm, I'm I'm laughing at myself. You know what I'm saying? Like, nigga, and I'll never do it again. Nigga, this, this beard been here since. Nigga, I, I ain't shaved my head since. It don't. <laughs> For real. It don't, please, because, yeah. Nigga, I'm, I am keeping it. I might trim it up a little bit, but, hey, this, this beard ain't going nowhere, nigga. You, you see that damn picture? Uh-uh. I, I ain't doing it. I ain't doing it. Thank you. We appreciate it. We like it. For real. Appreciate you. For real. So, are you looking forward to playing any new role? Like you like you mentioned, you play the cop and lawyers and drug dude. You you want to play a certain type of role? Man. Since you haven't yet? You know, like King Wesley kind of like ignited this whole superhero thing. Like, I really do want to play like a superhero. You know, you know what I'm saying? Like, just it's on some like that's that's kind of like my dream, um, because I played damn near every role for real. But I got I got so much yeah. stuff, man. Like, like this year is like I said, this is all about Dewan Ford. Like, I'm doing all projects that I I wanted to do. You know what I'm so saying? So you gonna be a superhero? Damn, shit. Actually, you yeah, yeah, I should have though. No, no, like for real. Like I, I came up with everything with a few different ideas, but not the superhero. But because we ain't never had a superhero with a beard, have we? No, nah, for real. I'm gonna, have, I'm gonna, have a, I'm gonna have a beard with some buffs. Wait. All that nigga, I'm gonna be Hold coming on. through this motherfucker. Flying, <laughs> <head>, shooting <laughs> motherfucking. Oh, 
black man. What? Right, no, for real, for real. Like, <laughs> hey, no, but that's, hey, yeah, no, hold on. Let me, let me take some notes. Listen, <laughs> I feel like that. We need a superhero with a beard. No, no, definitely, for real. A light skin, and then, like, another goal of mine is I'm trying to bring light skin back. <laughs> for real, man, because I... Y'all left, huh? Man, y'all light left skin, for a little minute. it be like, nigga, damn, like, we... Who escorted y'all out? Because y'all did leave for man, a second. Man, I, 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 would, I would say our, our black women did. Wait a minute, like, oh... So uh, we stop messing with y'all. Huh? Yeah, no, I'm telling you, man, for real, because see the the, we the, like, the white girls are always the like the darker, darker niggas, right? Mm-hmm. I remember when I was in college, and like, you know, my man, he he ain't never really get no girls like that. We always had the white girls. The white girls they ain't they ain't never like me. And I thought about like, oh, cause I, I look just like them motherfuckers. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, but then now, nah, man, y'all, you know, our, our black women, y'all, y'all just love, you know. And I'm just like, damn, like, man, light skin is just not in, you know. But it, then, all, it all make it don't matter. Yeah, no, nah, right, so. right, 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 right. <laughs> for real, for real. But no, but that's that's a goal of mine. But it's funny because a lot of people in that group they they call me a light skin, dark skin nigga, yeah, or something like that. And I always joke. I feel like being light skin is really like a learned behavior, or acting light skin is a learned behavior mm. because light skinned niggas was always like pretty boys, you know what I'm saying? But see, I was raised by like real gorillas, real apes. And I ain't talking about figuratively. Well, I, it is figurative, but like my dad and my brothers, they all like black gorilla motherfuckers. Like, <laughs> like for real, like, I, I can show y'all a picture. Of, I uh, want to uh, see a picture. Man, can I please? here, nigga, you can look at my dad like, nah, nigga, that nigga ain't your daddy, nigga. Yo, your mama need to get him up. Y'all right. hope to laugh for a second because <laughs> I want to see what they look like. Uh, okay. uh, for Take real. a little drink break while he uh, looked that up. Nigga, so look, that's my that's with my mom and, and my pops. Okay, then, Dad. Listen, yeah. The nigga is a, a, yeah. a, a real life ape. Nigga, he got yeah. eight hands. How tall is he? Uh, he he might. Uh, okay. you know, well, he he probably probably a little shorter now, but we we six three. But, okay, you know, he, yeah. I was he, gonna say he was looking like he uh. Yeah, he uh. She look, and then these, this is my, my older brother that I was just telling you about. Really? And this is my uh, baby brother. But, you know, but they all, they all dark skin. See, I, where, you, where you come from? Well, you know, because my mom was, was <laughs> like, so you it's like, you know, I usually, you know, if a light person and a dark person come together, at least you a nigga be brown. But, like, nigga, I came out same color as my mom. Yep, but, yeah. but my, my son came out brown, though. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So it just be like it just jump around. Do yeah, like do. the shit. You know, genetics. Yeah, man, it's it's crazy, but you know, but it, it it's funny. But I am on a mission. I'm trying to bring light skin back. All right, we because, bring man, light skin but, back with a super, with a superhero, light skin superhero. Yeah, no, for real, man. Because with know, a beard. Yeah, a beard. A What's pistol, your superpower? Bucks. I don't know, man. That's what I gotta figure out. We gotta figure this yeah, out for real. Cause yeah, and then I can be the newscaster. Right, so like when you you came and helped somebody, or this tragedy happening in the city, and they talking about on the news, I'm gonna be that girl telling everybody. Hey, no, hey, no, for real, I I think we might have a hit, for real. I'm telling, like, shit, I'm with it. We need a superhero. You know, I had to, you know, do stuff, but it's like at the end of the day, yeah, I was sick, but then I'm like, man, it's nothing I would rather do than be here watching my my son. He scored 20 points in the game. You know what I'm saying, like. Though, you know, of course, I would have loved to have done both, you know, been in his game and the Lions game, but sharing these moments with him is is priceless. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So, hey, you know, fuck it. I got to drive to Indiana, and I'm going a, I'm to a miss the premiere and miss the Lions game this weekend. But, you know, like my son, he's going to really pre- – I hope he appreciate it. He will. You know, when, when he get older. But I definitely appreciate it as, as a father and as a fan of his. I, I just enjoy watching my boy perform, you know. Uh-huh. So, definitely. Come on, proud dad. Right, right. No, for real, man. Like, and I, I got two of them. See, like my my baby boy. I thought he was about to be a, a gamer or something. He he might be better than my my oldest. That motherfucker, man. He Wambo. <laughs> everybody call him Wambo. I'm like it. How do you how do you sign? Uh, so Wambo is eight, and then Wani is eleven. And then I got Mila, she's nine. So Mila right. and Wambo, so it's really Mila and Liam. They're, they're only 10 months apart. Like, nigga, we went back to back. Like, nigga, the wife was like, yeah, I need to pray. I'm saying, man, it's probably going to say positive because you just you just had a baby. Like, she's like, no, I need to pray. 
She, she took one, man, and showed up. He, mm. he was in there cooking. Listen. For real. <laughs> she, he was in there cooking. So it's the total of four? No, three. Three? Wait, so, okay. So, so, so Wambo and Liam is the same one. Okay, there yeah, we go. Yeah, yeah, because okay. see, Wambo came about, because his name Liam, so like the kids couldn't say his name, right? So they, they just call him Wim, <laughs> like, you know, on his on his team. And then he was really fast, so they was like, they was trying to say Lambo. They was like, Wambo! Aww. So it, then everybody started calling him Wambo. So I like, like it. Yeah, so that's, that's his name, like Wim. And then he be out there whamming, motherfucker. He be hitting, you know, he, he so play, it fit play perfect. Yeah, like, oh, it fit perfect. Yeah, yeah. I love it. So yeah, if you gonna miss some some Lions games, that's that's what you're yeah, missing for. No, definitely. Oh, definitely. Have you ever had any of the kids in the film before? Um, yeah. So Wani was in Diamond Girls. Yeah. yeah so oh. so when he was he was supposed to be um, my son, because you know me and A Red, we were we were a couple. Mm -hmm. So you know it was just more logical having Wambo because he he light skinned like me. Wani is the dark. You know the the brown one. Mm -hmm. So, but no, nah, Wambo he, he flaked on us. He went, no, I don't want to do. It. He cried and all this. Wani was like, I do it. I'm like, all right, cool. So, you know, I don't know if you remember, but at the end, you know, where it was a little kid, he's like, mommy, mommy. When the when the police kind of, yeah, yeah, yeah. So that that's my oldest son. Wani. That's okay. Yeah, yeah, Look yeah, at that. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. Now y'all got to go back, and y'all got to watch the film, yeah. so y'all know who we talking about. Mm -hmm. Boom, because y'all may not remember, because. Y'all watched it, yep. so now you gotta watch it again. Or if you didn't watch it, then you gotta actually watch it. Yep. Diamond Girls, because it's on Tubi Turner. Yep, exactly. Bet, bet, bet. And it's good. Yep. It's good. Diamond Girls. Yeah, so listen, we're gonna play another game. Mm -hmm. You ready? Yep. Well, you know, I'm, I'm not gonna ready. play that last one that we played the first time because. Man, I, I was horrible, man. <laughs> like, it's just like, nah, like, you know, I used to be. But nah, man, I'm getting old. It was hard, like, though. It was a little hard. Shit, I don't know. It was a little hard, you know what I mean? And I want, I'm glad we are like facing this way instead of the last time we were facing the wall. Yeah, that way, you don't have. All I seen was, was Cuz right here. <laughs> that like, he just looking at me, nigga, the whole time. Like, mm, nigga, that, I'm the answer, nigga. So it was like. <laughs> Every time you ask me, I'm like, Matlock, Matlock, Matlock. Like, just, just look at him, dog. Like, don't no, no matter where you shit at, he, he's staring at you. Yeah. Hey, but this the this the one though, man. I, I think one. I think this film probably really like elevated the independent film culture here mm -hmm. to to the next level. Like this, man, plug love. So it's on my wall because just about everything that's on my wall is like something like I legit have a, a strong love, passion for, a story mm -hmm. behind. That one was my introduction to the independent film world. Now, you know, I'm a book reader, so I was reading the book and for, with book club and they were like, you know, it's a movie too. And I'm like, oh, okay, well, I guess I gotta, you know, watch the movie now. Yep. I watched the movie and was like, hey. No, no, nah, nah, man, I love this. man, this <laughs> tell you, man, and it's funny that you said that because that really kind of like confirms what I just said. This this film took the independent film culture here in Detroit to the next level. It like did. so many people started watching our films because of this. Mm -hmm. Like no no bullshit. Like man, plug love. Like I, I really need to get a, a plaque and a poster at, at my crib because plug love changed my life. You know what I'm saying? It, it changed my kids' life. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, it, it opened up so many doors for so many people. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, this this movie, like, and it's funny, like, it's centered, perfect. Like, this movie did so much for our community here. You know what I'm saying? I like, agree. it really, really opened up a lot of doors. Okay, so it's, it's game time again. Game time. Yeah, oh, so these man. are... These are easier than the last time. I hope so. Oh. These are from the Black Card Revolt game. You're not going to get your Black Card Revolt, okay? So yeah, here we I'm, go. I'm here talking about I'm bringing light skin back. <laughs> Man, I'm, I might not be black no more after Listen, this Listen, you'll be Dang. fine. You'll be <laughs> fine. See, let's go with this first one. This is the easy one. How many fights did Fresh Prince get into before his mom got scared? I got in one little fight. Yeah, that was it. See? See? I just got in one, one scrap. My mom was like, nigga, you going to motherfucking Bel Air, nigga. 
<laughs> All right, next question. What movie does every black person have in their collection? We have options here. <clears throat> um, okay, A is Friday, B, Boys in the Hood, C, The Color Purple, or D, Scarface? Man, Friday, man. Okay. It, 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 it got to be Friday. Ain't no wrong answer with this one. Yeah, yeah. I mean, because, you know, like, yeah, Scarface. Because uh, I don't know, have Scarface. Boy, Boys in the Hood. I, I can see certain people not having that one, but I mean, to me, yeah, Friday. What, what was the fourth one? Uh, so it was Friday, Boys in the Hood, The Color Purple, yeah. and Scarface. Color, the, the Color Purple, that one. Yeah, because the men don't like that one too much. Yeah, because they'd be <laughs> like, yeah, I've, I've watched it, but, I, you know, boy, it'd be between Boys in the Hood and Friday. Or like the two, I feel it. I feel two, it. Two for sure, for sure. Okay, but. Yeah. There's no, there was no wrong answer. For yeah, that yeah. I mean, I, I kind of figured, but yeah, I mean, fr Friday was was kind of like, you know, Friday was just, just yeah. one of the ones, you know. Let's see. Um. Oh, what is the best comedy movie of all time? Here go your options. Mm -hmm. A is House Party. B, Coming to America. C, Friday. Or D, Harlem Night. All the nice is a little bit out of my. That, that's like kind of like, you know, yeah. I mean, it, it's a, it's a classic. But it's kind of <laughs> like that movie. You know, I wasn't even born when that came out. Uh, or that? I mean, I was a baby. Hold on, was I? Uh, I was born in '86. When when the Harlem Nights come out? I mm, I think it came out in '84. Yeah, we gonna have I, to check that yeah, out. Yeah, but I, you know, I, I love the movie. But I wasn't old I, enough to really know that movie either. But yeah, I, I know. But, it. but I definitely, I, I gotta say, Friday. I mean, because even to this day, a lot of the jokes or a lot of the scenes and the the one liners and shit like that, we still use today. From, we do. From Felicia to Debo to you know. uh to, to even, even like pops, you know what I'm saying? When he, you know, taking the shit and he spraying, you know what I'm saying? Don't it, nobody go in the bathroom. You know what I'm saying? Bathroom. Like that's yeah. that's yeah. classic timeless stuff. Like you gotta think you that right. movie came out over 30 years ago, and even even to this day, like it's still, mm -hmm. man, hey man, stall him out, Debo. Or, you know what I'm saying? Or you know, nigga, my mama bought me that chain. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like it's, it's so much stuff, and that's why like a movie like that I find funny because it's not like it, I understand they probably was. Trying to be funny, but nigga, that's just classic funny shit. Like, nigga, you right. Just, you you right. know what I'm saying? Like, that's the type of comedy that I like. You feel me? But like, mm -hmm. everything else, it was definitely funny. But Friday, like, that's it for. Man, okay, like, I'm inclined to agree with you. Yeah. Even though my heart is still with Harlem. Yeah. Man. No, I mean they they have some make classic. A good point. Yeah. Because see, it's like I said, in, in Friday, I I tie a lot of stuff into. It's like I said, I was born in '86, so like. My my memory really kind of started when I was eight, nine, ten years mm -hmm. old, maybe. You know what I'm saying? So like Friday was like one of the first movies yeah. that like came out in the theater that I'm like I'm watching, you know, laughing or whatever. You, you go you go to school on Monday talking Everybody about it. Know it. You know what I'm saying? Like nigga, like Harlem Nights. Yeah, you know we probably talked about it, but it wasn't one Friday to me. You know? I feel you. I feel yeah. you. I'm I'm old. I'm old. <laughs> yeah, so that makes sense for me. <laughs> Next question. What's the best music movie of all time? And here are your options. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> A, Five Heartbeats. B, The Wiz. C, The Temptations. Or D, Purple Rain. Five Heartbeats. There you go. Yeah. Hey, that that oh. movie, and that's another movie. I don't know when Ooh. it when it came out, but I can but I can guarantee you that it came out okay. around like that 94, 90, 95 range. Because mm. when I tell you, nigga, we watched that movie in my crib over and over and over, over and over and over again. Like yeah. that, that was one of the movies. Like I mean, I'm like the Temptations. Who? Like I. I knew about the five heartbeats. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. like, I thought they was niggas. Just... You thought they was a real group. And in my yeah. head, they they really are. Like, yeah. I listened to the soundtrack. Man. I had the CD. Actually, I'm about to, I, gotta, uh, I gotta go home and watch that, man. Because I think my kids, 
you know, they they, they definitely got their black car revoked. <laughs> nigga, they, they don't watch none of this stuff. They they gotta they, they gotta be cultured, man. I think the five heartbeats. I think you we gotta have take, a, yeah. a, a movie night. Um, the, and then this this is what you yeah. do after that. Watch the making of the five heartbeats. Now, see, as a yeah, somebody see, in the film industry, yeah, see, I never, I, I never that watched it. That is never a remarkable it. documentary. Well, shit, I'm taking notes. Like, oh, it's so good. You can um you can buy it on Amazon. You can rent it, but I like to buy my stuff. So. Yep, yeah, I'm about to. I'm, I'm putting it. It's in, so good. I'm putting it in my family group chat right now. Like watching five heartbeats. And. Just like little known fact, watching that um, documentary, R. Kelly auditioned to be in the fire Wow. They had like the audition reel. reel uh, R. Kelly in that. It's I so gotta, good. Man, I got I to gotta watch that, man. But it's yeah, so good. Definitely the fire heartbeats, you know, without a doubt. You know, the other movies, they're classics, mm-hmm. you know. But it's talking about the fire heartbeats. Yeah, man. Them, the fire heartbeats. Is, is like, like, okay. And this your last one. See, this the hard one. You an 86, baby. Oh, you 86. ain't gonna get this. <laughs> Which character from Cooley High was a regular cast member on a different world? So your um, options are A, Tyrone, B, Cochise, C, Pooter, or D, Preach? Uh, preach. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. uh, uh, Coach Jesus, he was the one that, that got killed, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Look, I see. I yeah. should have had more faith in you. No, yeah, no. So, so that that movie, I got hit too late. You know, I probably start watching that because my my mom loved uh, Cooley High. Cause she she went to Cooley here in, in Detroit, so it was okay. kind of like, oh, I went to Cooley. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So like, but I was I was one of my favorite movies, like. Man, I, I gotta, I gotta go home. Man, boom. Got, got another one. one. Got another uh, week of movie. No, no, come for on. real, cause like those, those are like movies that um, man, damn, I forgot, I forgot about Cooley High, man, cause my mom she had the VHS, and I, I, I played the shit out of Cooley High. That was like one of my favorite <laughs> movies, cause with oh, dog, sure. yeah, cause okay. he was fighting. And he, he hit his head or something. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I ain't Dang. watched it in probably about 15, 20 years. Dang, see, I'm about yeah. to have to watch it again. Yeah, man. Yeah, cool. Yeah, Coach Yeah. Yep. Okay, so we have talked a little bit in our game about the films of, you know, Hollywood and everything. But you are currently working on some other films mm-hmm. as well yourself. Tell me about some projects you have going on right now. Next project is uh, Fatal Dispatch with Sierra Angelia, King Wesley, Emery Law. Um, I'm really big on production quality, you know, mm-hmm. when it comes to my films um, and acting. You know, so I got some of the best actors. Um, Road Days on shot it. When, okay. I, when I tell you, like, this film, like, you're you going to really see the difference. Like, you know, oh, damn, you know, y'all did y'all big one, mm-hmm. you know, with this one. I tell you, Road Dazon and his crew, they're like next level when it, when it comes to production. They dope. Like yeah. They just, man, like the, the shots that you get, the lighting, the sound is, is next level. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So, man, I'm definitely looking forward to it. Yeah, definitely. that's going to be dope. Yep. That's and then, gonna and be then dope. also, you know, and as an actor, I've been getting booked out of town. Like, I'm, I'm shooting uh, down in South Carolina. I shot down in Houston. I got booked again in Houston uh, late May. I got a, a gig in Atlanta. Um, okay, the one. I, I had an offer down in Miami, but I, I couldn't make it because I'm filming all, all next month. Mm-hmm. Um, Street Legal Season 2, Dirty D Season 3. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, we just, man, like, it's really a blessing. Like, I damn near had tears in my eyes when I was down in Houston driving to the airport. Like, oh, I'm getting booked in different states. Yeah. For my talent, like people, people are paying me, flying me out mm-hmm. for me to act in, in their movie. Like if you'd have told me I'd have been doing this two, three, four, or five years ago, like nigga, I would have thought you was bullshit. You know what I'm saying? Like it was just I kind of had a moment. Like damn, dog. Like people from all the way down in Houston, in South Carolina, yeah. and Miami, love my work to where they want to fly me out. And, and bring me down here, pay for food, hotels, and all that stuff. Like I'm like, damn, like this, this is real. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because it's one thing when you're getting booked here. It's like, all right, you know, whatever. Woo, woo. You know, of course, and I never take it take it for granted. But it's like when you start getting booked in, in different states, 
by people that don't even know you. Mm -hmm. See, here there's a lot of relationships. I got relationships with a lot of a lot of people. They know who I am, you know, whatever it is. Hey, yeah, come on, Dewan, let's let's do this movie, whatever. So it's like, yeah, you know, I appreciate it, but it's like when people that don't even know you, yeah, they just you know seeing you on TV, like nigga, I want that nigga to come down here. I I pay him, do this, do that, whatever. Mm -hmm. I want, I need him to be in my movie. Like that shit speaks volumes to what we're doing here in Detroit, and specifically to you because you said that you was about to take some stuff for yourself, yep. right? Uh, definitely. And you need to own that. Yeah, like definitely. I said, pat yourself on the back. Don't yep. be sitting up there talking about some oh it's cringy. I hate my work. Yeah. Because the people love you. No, no, for real. Like, yeah. and it's it just it's a blessing, man. And like I became really emotional because my my mom passed away. Uh, last October, and it's like since then I've I've become more emotional, mm -hmm. and it's just like certain situations, like man, I, I start tearing up, and I had a moment, like I said, I'm I'm riding back, you know, to the airport, I'm just like, damn, man, like, I really wish my mom could be here to see her her son mm -hmm. get booked for acting roles in in different states, you know what I'm saying, like yeah. that that speaks volumes to the type of work that they put in and the type of doors that they open up for us, man. Mm -hmm. Like this it's bigger than, than me. You know what I'm saying? This shit that that murder and and Moolah films and, and even Dennis Reed, Lisa Brown, Kamal Smith, Des, Des Cortez, you know what I'm saying? Like these people created a market for us. Yeah. And it's like, you know, for me to be reaping these these blessings, man, like that that's why you see me as, as an EP on a lot of these projects, man. Cause I had people around me that that you know afforded me different opportunities that blessed me you know with with an opportunity you know what i'm saying yeah. so i want to give people those same opportunities but you know this year you know 20 2024 is it's all about the one for it yes you, know, for real, you have for paid real. it forward already you know, so definitely. it's about you definitely you've earned it well, do that appreciate you oh i'm so happy for you, yeah, I mean, <laughs> you know, i've been i've been working like i said and everything that i've done I can say that I worked for it. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I ain't, I ain't take no shortcuts. As I mentioned, as far as being, you know, in lead roles, I actually earned it to where other directors, other EPs booked me for lead roles first. I never even had a more than two scenes in the movies that I EP. So mm -hmm. I, I, I didn't I didn't cheat the game. Like nigga, I worked hard. You know what I'm saying? Like to where people recognize, oh yeah, this nigga, he getting better. Like, mm -hmm. I need him in in this role. You see what I'm saying? Yep. Like, and that, that's the type of person I am. I don't want to just come in and just, you know, spend a couple of dollars. Oh, yeah, nigga, I'm a, I'm the main character. Like, no, nah, <laughs> man, I want I want to work for it. I want to earn that shit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, <clears throat> we've come near the end of our interview. It's, it's we, the I, end. I know. Come we on, man. So I'm, just, I'm just getting started. In this, um, I like, know, right? Come on, now. Uh, okay, mm -hmm. so, look. Um... At real talk, we ain't just getting started. Like you, right. you got places to be. You talk about how booked and busy you are, and yeah, you, you about to leave here and do what yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, man, shout out to uh, Jason, man. You know, they, <laughs> they came up here from Dayton, and they and they they shooting. Okay, and, um, yeah. you know, they, they booked me as well. So, and shout out, man, we working. Shout we out. To it. So I gotta I gotta get you out of here, but before we go, now the last time you were here, you did get your book and everything, right? Mm -hmm. So. We took care of you. Mm -hmm. Now, this episode of Tim Telling Tales is actually being sponsored by this book author here, Tony LaRue. Okay. And okay. this book is called Her Sister's Secret. Ooh. So, for all of you who are watching, make sure y'all pick up a copy of this book right here. It's good, y'all. Okay. I voted for this book as like one of the number one top reads of 2023 with my book club. It's really good. Um, shout out to Tony. And you all pick up a copy of her book on Amazon now. Okay. So, before you go, I would really like for you to help me with the sign off. Please, Duane. Oh, yeah. Most definitely. Okay. Most definitely. So, I know you may not remember the sign off. Okay. But, uh, so I got to remind you. Yeah. yeah <laughs> no, definitely. Definitely. <laughs> so, I'm going to say the first part. I'm going to say, I'm Tim. I'm telling Tills. Read a book. Mm hmm Right? Yeah. Wait, no, that's not how that go. Oh, I see it. <laughs> she don't even remember. I, I'm supposed to remember. Wait, what's in my cup? Crown. Like, that's not how it goes. Nope. That's not how this works. Nope. Okay, y'all. 
Mm, I done messed this up. This is Javon's fault. Because he always Man, messes it up. Everything is, is Javon's fault. fault. If, if you ever have a situation, you want to blame somebody, it's blame Javon. I'm, I'm telling you, like, for real. Like, I don't, I told you, I don't, I don't joke with a lot of people, and there's truth behind every joke, but there's truth behind this joke, too. <laughs> This shit, because Javon, when some of them get fucked up, it's his fault. It's his I'm fault. telling you. We'll go and that. that's a joke, but I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's, that's my bro, man. I, I, love, I love Javon, man. Uh, that's my guy. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> no, for bad. real. But the thing is, man. <laughs> He's going to hit your last so and, hard. And I'm, but I'm so excited because we start filming season two of Street League with February 12th. So it's like, I'm counting down. Yeah. I'm counting down. It's like, oh, man. Yeah. Y'all you know, had a good time, too. Yeah, because you got to you gotta think, like, this you, you spending happened. six weeks. Six weeks with, with, with these people. Like, we family now. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? So it's like, when, when we get everybody together and we sit at, sit at that table again, it is going to be like, it's just a different type of energy, man. Like, this I is what happens wait. in these interviews. Like, I really do be thinking I'm about to do one thing and say one thing and then just be, no, I got to hey. talk about this too. Hey. It be like that. Because you know what else I forgot? What? I forgot to tell people to follow us. Like, we can't just end the show No, but the thing is, they don't know where to follow me. They don't know where to follow you. But if, if they ain't already following us, then, man, they, they already lost. This is true. That's, that's but how I look at They it. need to nah, get I found. Know, know, you know, know what I'm saying? So, I'm definitely, definitely, definitely. I'm going to go ahead and let you go first, because you my guest. Tell everybody where they can find you. Um, you can find me uh, really on, on Instagram, Dewan uh, Ford, D E J U A N F O R D, uh, Facebook, Dewan Ford. You know, same way. I like to keep my stuff simple, um, easy. Um, you know, I get a lot of followers from from Tubi. And I'm pretty sure they just type my name in, so I just try to keep stuff just simple. Dewan Ford. That's that's it. And you guys can find me. Tam Telling Tales on all social media platforms at Tam Telling Tales. So if you go to TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, if you look up Tam Telling Tales, that's going to be me. Man, and that's what I need. I need TikTok and YouTube and all that shit. It's a lot of work. Boy, I, I know. Because I'll be burnt off, burnt off, burnt out off Instagram. It's a lie. So you got to have like, a social media manager because uh, for real, you I was just really like, booked. Man, it's it's a lot. It's kind of like I'm getting like ADHD too because like I'll be doing one thing and then somebody messaged me and somebody called me. I'm I feel like, seen. I forgot what the fuck I was doing. Yep, I feel seen right now because that's, that's me. So, that shit, that shit. Is it be whew. like that. Well, listen, everybody, we are going to head on out. But before we do, I'm going to have Zawai help me with my sign off. Let's get it. So, <laughs> we're going to do this right this time. I'm going to say, I'm Sam, I'm telling the tales, and then to the camera, you're going to say, read the book. Okay. Okay. You ready? Yeah, yeah. All right, y'all. I'm Sam, I'm telling the tales. And read a motherfucking book, God damn it. And go watch Street Legal and Dirty D and By Any Means and go Google Dewan Ford and Tam Telling Tales, man. Turn up, man. After all that, read a book. Before that, read a book. Make sure y'all read a book. Yeah. Because I ain't gonna lie, you you made me read a book. I probably ain't read a book maybe like ten years. And then when you asked me last time, you like, yeah, when's the last book you read? I'm like, shit, I can't, <laughs> I can't go in here like, man, I ain't read a book. So I, I had to start reading books, and it actually has helped. You know, I read a lot of self help, you know, like motivational books. Mm -hmm. And thanks to you, I yeah. actually started started doing it. Because prior to that, I'm like, nigga, I ain't read a damn book. <laughs> I was in high school, you know what I'm saying? But no, nah, but thank you, no, for real, for real. Absolutely. Yeah, oh, no, this no, makes no, me so happy. No, oh. All right, y'all. Bye. Yeah.